So, hello everyone, uh, I'm Pierre Naudet, and uh, I'm here today to talk about contrastive representation for label noise. I'm a PhD student at Orange, and uh, this work has been made with Vincent Le Maire and Alexis Bondu, who are both researchers at Orange, and with Antoine Cornusel, who is a researcher at AgroPytech. Uh, we have submitted this work at uh, the IIL workshop because uh, learning with label noise is actually part of the weekly supervised learning, uh, uh, which is actually a keyword that was appearing a lot on the HIOL website. I've just taken a screenshot here, and we have a lot of uh, keywords from our talk that actually match the, work the workshop, so that's why we are here today. So, what about representation learning and level noise? It's a huge topic because deep learning architectures I have an hard time uh, learning representations in the presence of label noise. However, classification heads and classification algorithms as a whole are quite robust to label noise. It has been shown empirically, and especially in the paper called Decoupling Representation and Classifier for Noisy Label Learning from Jang and Al. Uh, what they did is that uh, they trained a deep learning architecture on Cypher 10 with uh, some noise and reported the, ac the accuracy of uh, the, class the architecture. And they first trained the architecture on clean data, reporting the green curve, and the green curve actually behaves quite well. Uh, then they trained the same architecture on noisy data, reported with the yellow curve. So you can see that the yellow curve is way below the green curve, because learning on noisy labels is harder. Uh, and then they tried to find the origin of uh, the decrease in performances. So they take the, they first train the architecture on clean data, then they try to retrain some part of it on noisy data. Uh, they retrain the classifier part and the representation part. What you can see is that the, the classifier part, the blue curve, is actually quite high and does not move that much which does mean that retraining the classification part on the data is quite robust. However, retraining the representation uh, with the red curve uh, is actually uh, quite bad. You can see that the red curve actually fits the yellow curve. And one conclusion we can draw is that it's uh, representation learning uh, which is affected the most by noisy levels. And in order to combat that, uh, a lot of robust algorithms try to, to, to find a way to still learn a good representation in presence of label noise. And here you have uh, multiple ways to do it. The first main way is to, to try to recover the clean distribution from the noisy data. You have multiple ways uh, to do it. You could uh, do label correction in order to um, try to find the noisy levels and correct the, the, the level to the clean one, but you could do uh, by other means. Uh, you could do instance reweighting, putting high weights on samples you think are clean and low weights on uh, noisy samples. You could actually try to modify the samples itself, uh, but you have uh, many of the families of algorithms. For example, you have uh, collaborative algorithms that use multiple models to find agreements and disagreements and detect noisy samples thanks to that. You have algorithms that try to correct the loss itself of uh, the neural networks uh, to, to accommodate the noisiness of the levels. And you have the usual robust algorithms, uh, such as, for example, the mean average error as a binary classification loss, which is quite robust loss. Uh, and then um, you could have other ways to combat it, and it's about contrastive learning and level noise. So first, contrastive learning. We are going to explain it for the mean of a known contrastive algorithm called SIMCLR. SIMCLR is a contrastive learning algorithm composed of three components. The first one is a data quantization module T. The second one is an encoder network F. And the last one is a production head T. So here is a figure uh, taken from the same CLR paper itself, um, from Cheng and Al. And it does explain how you can train such an architecture on unlabeled data. So first, you take 
uh, a symbol, a, na a name image, X, a picture, and you send them through the datum augmentation module T with two different seeds. And then it's going to generate two similar images, slightly different, but it's going to be a positive pair symbol. Then it sends them both images through the networking encoder to get a representation H. Uh, then it uh, optimizes the contrastive loss on a project space space uh, Z, uh, Z of a smaller dimension. And how the, the contrastive loss is optimized? It's optimized when similar images uh, are actually close in the project space. Um, and actually, what has been found recently is that uh, contrastive learning algorithms uh, with functioning actually uh, improve the performance of uh, the usual robust algorithms. So here is a, a, a table from uh, Goshenal uh, from the paper called Contrastive Learning Improved Model Robustness under Label Nice, where they um, um, they benchmarked multiple robust algorithms made to, to learn deep architectures uh, under Lab Noise, and they trained them in an end-to-end -end manner and reported, them, uh, reported uh, the, the accuracy of these uh, algorithms. And then they compared that to um, taking a deep uh, architectures, architecture, pre-training it with same CLR, and then fine-tuning the whole architecture and the classification head with the rob some robust algorithm. And what they found is that uh, same CLR pre-training is actually quite good and uh, improves the performances of robust algorithms by a lot. And one possible conclusion from uh, people could draw from this paper is that uh, actually robust algorithms are unable to learn or even promote a good representation and they are are actually degrading de de it during training. So one idea you could have uh, is uh, is freezing the representation uh, or could it be an improvement to actually just take the same CLA uh, embedding and freezing it to actually improve the, the performances of robust algorithm further. So we did the experiment that we have uh, in this experiment free setup called LBNC. The setup A is just robust algorithms uh, learning in an end-to-end -end manner. Setup B is uh, first pre-training uh, the representation part with some CLR and then freezing completely the, the, um, the embedding part uh, and then just learning the classification head with uh, robust algorithms on noisy data. And the setup C is uh, pre-training the representation with some CLR and then functioning the whole architecture on easy data with uh, robust algorithms. Um, we picked multiple robust uh, algorithms, there is six of them, coming from different families, uh, the same families uh, we presented earlier. Um, and very, they are like reported here, it's all um, well-known and quite recent uh, algorithms for learning uh, with uh, noisy data. And uh, we did the experiments on two datasets, uh, two non-visual datasets, Cypher 10 and uh, Cypher 100, and under two uh, noise models. The first one is going to be a symmetric noise model, so uh, every sample would have an uniform probability to get corrupted to any other classes, and you would have an asymmetric uh, noise where uh, you will get, get corrupted to only to close classes. So if you're a bird, you will only be corrupted to a plane, or if you're a truck, only be corrupted to a car, for example. Uh, and then the results uh, are going to be presented in many parts. The first part is about uh, A versus setup A versus setup B. So it's going to be end-to-end -end versus uh, freezing the representation. And uh, what you can see from this table is that um, for clean data, uh, learning in an end-to-end manner, even with robust algorithms, is better than uh, freezing the representation uh, with CMCLR, which does conclude that uh, CMCLR, CMCLR 
provide a good representation, but not good enough when the super when there is no uh, noisy data. And then as soon as uh, noise is introduced, uh, you can see that the setup B is actually uh, better than the setup A, uh, which does mean that uh, actually robust algorithms are not able to learn a good representation from scratch and uh, a pre-trained uh, contrastive representation, even without fine-tuning, would perform end-to-end learning as soon as noise is, is introduced. And then, in the second time, we present uh, the results from B versus C. So it's about freezing the pre-trained representation versus fine-tuning it. And what you can see is that uh, fine-tuning the same CLR representation is actually better than freezing, at, uh, freezing it uh, in all cases. Um, which actually draws an interesting conclusion, which is uh, that Actually, robust algorithms are able to uh, learn and promote a good representation, but only if they've been provided uh, with a good, stati good starting point. So, as a conclusion, we presented a new view of the label noise literature for a means of representation preservation. We conducted experiments on many noise models, noise rates, and algorithms to compare fine tuning and freezing a contrastive representation. Robust algorithms are able to preserve and even promote a good representation if provided with a good starting point. Uh, algorithms designed to preserve or promote a good representation under label noise are not able to learn one from scratch. And uh, results need to be taken with care as only two close priority data sets have been used. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.